the five of us must have missed it. And if it was the, if it was disclosed to us, then I don't understand how we talked about it and actually had meetings with other banks, which you were aware of, that we were going to refinance these bonds. We we went through this a couple of years after the bond were issued. I went back a full minute that had this language in there where it said the bond had the other could ever be called with the provision of the bond holder. We went out and looked for dead bonds were looking for opportunity. And then we went back to the bond holder and bond holder was not. You know, I wanted this for a long term hold. So there was a clause in there that we could look to do that, but at the discretion of the bondholder to accept it or not. That's correct. What would you expect? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean that's I mean I, I understand. What a boondoggle. Okay. You wasted Mr. Richel and Mr. Harlan's time. And that was uh, I know we had the option. Um, okay, those were. Um, you don't need to answer the last one. Okay. Um, John or Jeff, do you have any questions for Dan? No. no. Phil? No. Chris? No. Phil Allen? No. Okay. Um, those were the only questions that we were asking um, of you, so I think we can um, move on. One other thing I would like to point out, too. When we went through the meter program for your bank order, we initially had over a full page of delinquent accounts. So then how we have maybe less than the implement of the program was noted in all delinquent accounts was recorded claims for the amount of the delinquent utility fees. And people can pay very quickly when that started happening. So, you know, there's been other instances where I've stepped in and made recommendations that have greatly benefited this business. Now, I've been there for 23 years, I've seen it all, and we know that we've had some challenges, you know, we've had some disagreements, and I think overall, you're in a much better position now for. 15 years ago for sure, mm -hmm. even 10 years ago for sure. And I think that there's a credit to be had there for me, my advice to the board, and you know, frankly working with the board to try to find solutions every time that there's a problem. But the solution's always free. Not that we can't let perfect be the enemy of good. So if we've done a lot of good things together, we'd like to continue to do good things with you. I understand, you know, the challenges from not you being a little bit more remote than you might like. Uh, you know, it's been a pleasure working with you. I'd like to continue because I respect your decision. And uh, frankly, if somebody were going to step in behind me, I probably would be one of the ones that I would be comfortable with you a good job. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Jeff, do we have to make a decision today? Can we defer it and make it one of your comfortable? Um, Mike, you're on the phone, and I'm sorry I have um, didn't ask you. Do you have any questions? Um, no. Okay, you're okay with both attorneys' comments. Yeah, I just, uh, the other guy there, you said he had no experience with PPP. Is that correct? Does it break up a lot? Yeah, no, he had no experience with, he had no experience with PPP, although his firm did, and they did receive okay. money from that, but no. Um, and Chuck, okay. I think in most cases, most of the CDDs have not been um, given any opportunity to um, get money from that. No. I I've not had any of my uh, clients be successful in, in that. It just hasn't been available. I think what we talked about. I think what we talked about at the last meeting was the potential of entering into some sort of an agreement with the village, who right. it is available to. Right. 
and I think people were questioning me that other golf courses had received that, but they were doing that um, as a golf course entity and not a CBD entity. Right, a private course. Private and course, and the private courses have obtained quite a bit of money, but it was because it was a private course, and I just, uh, because I've had comments from residents on, well, you know, such and such course got it, why can't we? And, and that's the issue, that they were a private course, and therefore they could. I'm ready to make a decision. Um, uh, for the other board members, are you ready to make a decision? Are you comfortable with this at this point? Or do you want to think about it and uh, make the final decision at the next meeting? And that's the mic. I'm OK with what I have right now. Chris? Yeah. Bill? I'm fine with making a decision now. Okay. Bill, do I make a motion? I make a motion that we go with the new law firm. I don't know what their name is. <laughs> Woodward, Pierce, and Lombardo. Okay. Woodward, Pierce, and Lombardo. Do I have a second? Second. Um, any discussion? Um, any discussion from the board members? Additional discussion? I would say for myself, and, you know, besides the, the, the question about the bond, you know, I don't think there's been anything that I've disliked about Dan's service. Uh, and and, and as, as he said, you know, there's obviously always two sides to a story. So I guess you could debate either side, or who knew what or how it was presented. But I can tell you from being on the board at the time that it was not what the board thought was going on. Uh, I look at it really is two things. And going into this whole process, I looked at it as two things. I do like the idea of having somebody closer. And, you know, geographic, it just is what it is. For those of you who don't know, Dan's up in the panhandle. And he's done a very nice job of, of, of attending when he can. But he can't always attend. And, of course, COVID has had an impact on that as well. Um, and, and But the flip side, too, you know, I, I think sometimes there's a call for Change. maybe a different perspective on things. Okay. Agreed. Uh, so that just letting my personal well, thank you. Out there. Right. Anyway. So, yeah, I mean, as a new board member, it seems like there's a lot of distrust with what's been going on. Um, so I think it's time to make a fresh start. Okay. Phil, I know your opinion. That's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, can we have a vote? Um, all those in favor of switching to Woodward? Pierce and Lombardo. Pierce and Lombardo. Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Mike, you and what's your, Mike? I, I, I was with the first one. Okay. Okay, okay so, um, so Dan, uh, Chuck, you will uh, notify Tony and um, we can transition files and I'm sure Dan will work with him and uh, get him up to speed, get him a flavor. And Dan, I'd like to thank you for um, all the work you've done and will continue to do until this is finalized. Um, I, personally, it's been a great pleasure working with you. Um, and um, thank you very much. Yep, thanks. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Okay, we got that. Um, now the regular stuff. John, you're on. All right. Um, <clears throat> it is April 27th. We're getting towards uh, closer to May. Typically, when we uh, change out our annuals, that'll be coming mid May. Mulch has been delivered. We're going to put that in after. Um, unless it starts to rain and any of that stuff. We know I've worried about it staying in bags, but there's no rain in sight. So we'll keep keep an eye on that. Um, palm trimming in the community will start uh, the second week of May as well. Um, the same week as the pine straw. Uh, the flowers we're using this spring uh, for spring and summer uh, until next fall will be uh, the Salvia Vista mix. Um, so if you want to look that up just to see what they are, it's multicolored. Put some reds in there. Um, 
that's kind of what's going on with the community right now and the golf course. Uh, fuel prices are going up, so fertilizer prices are going up, chemical prices, anything that has to be shipped is going up. Uh, at least the transportation side of it, the cost of shipping it is. Um, I don't know if anybody's noticed like the cost of lumber and materials and all that stuff, it's, it's all going up, especially in this area where the housing market's you know, doing really, really well. Um, so just some things to keep an eye on, you know, nothing to worry about, but just, you know, we're heading in a different direction. Um, John, you'll have to be cognizant of that when we start doing budgets. Absolutely, right. That's kind of what I was leaning towards is May, you know, next month we start our budget uh, process uh, for the upcoming year. Um, Monday closures. Uh, typically in the past, you know, we close uh, Mondays, uh, usually starting in May sometime. Uh, till about mid-September. Last year we did not, obviously, because of COVID, um, and we had this, that great summer. It was obviously more important for that. Um, I've sp spoken with Jeff a little bit about it, uh, about maybe getting those back, or at least a handful of them to do some spraying and, and whatnot. Uh, so I just wanted to you know, get your thoughts on it and the board's thoughts, and you know, let Jeff uh, give you his thoughts as well uh, on those. Considering where we sit with revenue and how it's looking and the forecast and all that plays a big big part. So. Jeff, what's your opinion on? Well, I think, um, well, you know, the budget was set up for the months of May through September for there, to, for there to be closures. You know, obviously last year we didn't, like John said, we had COVID and you know, we, we had been closed in April for 17 days, so we really didn't have the latitude to be able to close for those days. We're trying to make up that money, you know, we made up some of it. And, you know, as you can see from what I gave you guys, we're, we're, we're running hot right now. I mean, we're doing really well. Um, you know, the conditions of the course, um, were good, but there were some issues, and I, you know, I want to give John the opportunity to clear up those issues going into next season because we would like to continue to have the success that we had this season. Um, my opinion would be, I think we go ahead and give him the closure dates that he needs. I mean, there are some dates he knows that, that we're going to need to be open on Monday, but all in all, I think we could do that through September and give him the ability to. Um, you know, catch up on some of the projects he needs to catch up on. Uh, you know, you know, obviously, if you play golf here, you know some of the issues on some of the greens. We have discussed that in a couple meetings previously. We've discussed the um, the, the the water situation, the the drainage, the, uh, the you know, we made a purchase of a sub air system, all that. And I think it's important that we have the opportunity to clean it up. Um, all in all, we're probably looking at, you know, most most summers, we'd be looking at basically a wash on the day. What you would save in, in payroll would be about what you would make for the day. I, I don't know, COVID's a whole different animal. I mean, I was talking to Dan, uh, I heard car guy the other day, and we've both been in the business a long time. You know, this, uh, I've been since uh, started in 90. Well, I started in 88 in the car barn at Coral Oaks, but officially started as a professional in 93. And I never seen anything like this, but I mean, this is insane. And I know Phil probably can speak to it too. 100%. I mean, it's just crazy. Now, will it be sustained? Who knows? We hope, you know, we hope that people that come to golf because they can't do anything else, they can't go to the movies, they can't go to ball games, they can't go to this, they can't do that. We'll continue to play golf. I'm sure there'll be some drop back, but we would hope to sustain that. And the other part of it is all the people that are moving out of New York and Michigan and Ohio and all these states that were super restricted during COVID while well, our governor opened up the state. We've seen a population boom. You know, obviously, I don't know if anybody followed the census, but we're getting a congressional seat. Uh, we're gonna have 29 uh, uh, electoral college now. Florida's becoming one of the hottest states in the union. People from California. We have people from California and Oregon playing our golf course. It was unheard of. I never saw anybody from Oregon in 30 years of working in the business almost. 
Will we be able to sustain it? I hope so. But the key to sustaining that is making sure that the maintenance level of the golf course remains at a top level. I want to give John every opportunity to do that. So I'm okay with posting on Mondays. I guess the bottom one. Okay. So yes, uh, we're seeing. I, mean, I just wanted to kind of piggyback on that. So the sub air system that we have, or, we're, or do we have that in our possession now? Yeah, we have, and half of it's installed. Half is already installed. But not, so half is a two part system. One part's already installed in all the greens. The other half we're going to start here soon, probably when things slow down a little bit, because it's kind of intrusive. Some of the drains are directly in front of the greens. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of the things we would do on those one day closures. We, you know, try to get two or three greens done in a day, um, you know, whatever it takes. Um, do the hard ones first. So there's no digging out of current irrigation. Oh yeah, you got, so where the outfalls of the drainages are on the greens, uh, every green, some greens have one, some have three, the majority have three or four. Um, where those outfalls for the drainages then goes into another catch basin somewhere out by the green off to the left, right, maybe in the front of the uh, approach. We have to dig down to that line and, and cut into it and then install the the actual trap system that trap that helps make that vacuum seal yeah and then put a box you know put a like an irrigation box around it so you can have access to it and stuff okay and service it that's what we still have left to do as far as that that's one of the projects um one of the other projects is being we're going to lower uh some of the collars we get what they call sand dams over time from top dressing um we did that a couple years ago it's time to do it again um we're going to cut those out early on we'll just cut them out and we'll cut the We'll cut the humps out, we'll take a sod cutter and just remove the sod. And we're going to use that sod elsewhere on the course, but we're going to cut those collars out and regrade them out. And, and then within by midsummer, that grass will be growing back. It'll just, it just right. comes back on its own. Well, the quality of the course itself is short of obviously the collar issues. Nah. The course is, in, in my opinion, the best shape it's been in as long as I've seen it. So I'm sure getting those collars in shape is yeah. in a, almost a perfect position going into the fall. So. Yeah. Um, but as far as sustainability, I mean, nobody really knows. I think all companies in golf are trying to predict next year right now with forecasting. Mm -hmm. wow. And we can't continue to think that it's going to be like this. I mean, this spike is incredible. So I think there will be some tearing out, mm -hmm. um, but it's, there's no way to predict it. And also, too, uh, when talking with Jeff, if we're happen to be killing it on Mondays, obviously, let's stay open. I mean, I, we can make it work. We'll do something. You know, obviously, because um, I know we went back to uh, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday closures on airifications. Uh -huh. um, but it's nice to couple in that Monday with it and have four days because of the rains. That's what kills us during an airification. That's the only thing that kills us is the rain. Um, if it don't rain, everything more likely is going to go really smooth and, and, and be just fine. Uh, and it can rain early. It's just raining late. You know, that last day of, you know, filling in all the holes or getting everything rolled out and, um, that's what causes the issue. Also, I think that Top Golf is going to help with bringing in a lot of new golfers. The guys, a lot of people that don't want to go out and never maybe played a round of golf and don't want to take four hours or five hours out of the day, but they want to go drink with their buddies and maybe they got a good swing. And, hey, I'm gonna go out and play. Let's go out and play for once, you know. So I, I hope that's going to help drive a little bit. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's so hard to forecast that because there's a time where this game was just plummeting, especially in the Midwest and you know, all the little mom and pop places. Where, where obviously we're in the mecca of golf. Yeah. You know, even compared to California, we have more golf courses than them. Um, but it's it's hard to tell. You got this. I think it, this changing of the guard as well with the generational gaps. You know, you see now with the carts with the Bluetooth speakers already built in on them, and you know stuff like that. Then you got the old school crowd, no denim, the, 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 no no skinny jeans, no collar. You know. So it's, it's, it's going to change whether we like it or not, and hopefully we can, you know, be a part of it in, in a positive way. That's true. And I, I think another impact on our business, our rounds, is going to be the fact that the private clubs are now full. Yeah. And a lot of their members can't play their own golf course. So people from the Legends and other bone communities are going to have to have an outlet to play golf. Because they, they move to Florida, moving these golf communities to play golf. Right. We've seen spillover from that already. Right. So that's only going to increase as long as they don't build new golf courses, new private golf courses, and there's nowhere really to build them around here. Yeah. So um, I, I think we're in pretty good shape for foreseeable future. Yeah. And the other thing is that you know we were concerned about what golf would be like without our um, seasonal visitors from New York and from Canada, and 
No. Hopefully, nobody came. So hopefully next year. Yeah, it'd be like an extra. Yeah, it could possibly be. I mean. Well, that's, you know, you don't know. Before, you know, I, I had a conversation with the executive director of South Florida PGA, Jeff Lofstad, when they were here for the Chubb Class qualifier, which went really good. Um, and by the way, the Ryder Cup captain played golf here. I didn't know if that guy knew that. Steve Stricker was here. Nice guy. What a nice guy. Anyway. His autograph? Yeah. <laughs> did I check? I did not get his autograph. No, I, I didn't think that was in good taste. It's not a joke. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So anyway, I, I told Jeff, I'm like, you know, I, and I, a lot of you guys, I don't know if you know my background. I spent a lot of time throughout the years with Play Golf America. Play Golf America was a program to get people to play golf. And I was on a board with Golf 2020 nationally, uh, you know, served on committees, how are we gonna get more people to play golf, and all these spitballing ideas and think tanks and all that happy stuff, right? Well, you know, we grew the game a little here and there, and like we saw some marginal differences. But I looked at Jeff and I go, all these years, all we needed was a pandemic. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you think that, well, it's kind of in poor taste, I guess, to think that way, but it's the way it turned out. I mean, you know, a, a year ago at this time, we are in panic mode, right? I mean, who knows what's going to happen? We just come off 17 days of closure. Uh, you know, they're talking about restrictions and people under 65 shouldn't come out of their house and all these kind of things. And I think, to the good sense of our governor, and the good sense of, of people and the ability of what golf gives you. You can separate, you can be out in the air, you can be all those things. And, you know, we just got, we got lucky in a way, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. We got lucky and, and it worked out. And knock on wood, I said really wood's plastic. Yeah, hold on, John. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, knock on wood, it'll continue. And we'll continue to see population growth and. Hopefully they'll get the roads in some kind of shape where we can handle the population growth and we'll continue to see our business grow and, and, and flourish. And Duffy's reopening helps too. You know. And the other thing with that, with the movie theaters being closed, some people have gotten into the, um, the mode of streaming now that people are just as happy watching their movies. Teaches the kid how to swim. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, streaming, so maybe they're not going to the movie theaters and, you know, spend $20 for a movie for six people to watch rather than paying, you know, all that. I think so. people will go back to the movies eventually, but eventually. I'm going this weekend, actually. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah, my kids want to see some new movie. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, with that being said, uh, the housing market, how well it's doing. I mean, you see it here, I've talked to so many people, uh, Joe Giroux, um, Lou Frith, guys that have um, sold stuff in here and, and re recently. Um, I'm a little nervous about that. I don't think it's going to be an 08 thing at all because that was a different circumstance that caused that. Um, but it, it, it's crazy to see what's going on in real estate. Like I said, I had somebody put a house over by me up for a million dollars, and that's what Zillow said it was estimated. But if you talk to any realtor, that don't even, you know, Zillow's like way off. But still, to, to have, you know, there was over 1,200 views and 27 saves, and I'm like, Somebody would actually, you know, if that happens, I mean, I might have to sell my house. Yeah. I'm serious. I mean, that would be foolish. It would be a good business move, right? You know, even though it's the house I built to live in for the rest of my life, I, I can't believe it's happening all over again. And it's been about, what, 12 years? But ten? then you have to think, where are you going to go buy? Well, I, well I'm, I thought about that. This can't be sustainable, so I'm sit back and rent for a year or two and let it die back down and then jump back into the market. The money I would make would be so substantial that... Yeah. I think this time it's a it's a supply issue. There's not enough supply. And that's yeah. what's driving the cost up. Right. Last time it was it was bad bond, bad business. Is oh, what yeah. it was. everything was bad. It was right. The bankers and the so, realtors, and I was in banking yeah. at the time. I think this time it's different. I do feel like it's going to plateau though. It, it has, has to. to. It has everything to. yeah it has. To. Otherwise, I'm selling my house too. Thank yes. you. Exactly. <laughs> okay, you guys can rent a place. That's right. Let's get an RV. Yeah. Live in a van. Go by the river. <laughs> in a van. Down by the river. Um, John, just one question. If you get accomplished what you need to get accomplished, then we could open some of the Mondays towards the end of September. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, um, absolutely. I'm not saying rush through it. I'm saying do what you can. But if it comes to the point where you don't need those days, um, yeah, and even maybe if it's something where, like in spring, well, you know, we're in a timing situation. Um, let's say I spray on a Monday and I want to go, you know, the next call to order is two weeks from that, to, depending on what we're doing, depending on what kind of chemical or herbicide we're spraying. If we can't do it that Monday, then maybe just, hey, that's it. can you give us an extended, you know, 
tea time in the morning, like, you know, push it out till 8 o'clock or 8.30, give us some time to stay ahead, get ahead of play and, you know, do it like that. Or maybe maybe do a straight tea time that day so we can go off the back and stay in front ahead of everybody, get get it sprayed out, and then, yeah. you know, just make it. We always, Jeff and I always work well together. We always make it work. You know, we never have. We've never had any conflicts, you know. I mean, I try not to close the course in the summer unless it's absolutely – because, I mean, the way I look at it, if we're only getting 50 rounds a day, I'm not worried about those 50 carts all going to the same spot. Um, it's when this time of year is when you got just massive amounts of people and, you know, taking the cattle trail through the course. Um, but, yeah, we always make it work, so I'll, I'm not too worried about that. We'll do what we have to do, absolutely. So we'll start the closures uh – Saturday, Sunday, third, tenth, the tenth, starting May tenth. So we will be open on Memorial Day. Yeah, we'll, yes. we'll be open on Memorial Day and Labor Day. So all holiday Monday. All holiday Monday. Yeah, yeah. Monday yeah. Will open. Yeah. Because actually Independence Day is on Sunday, so your recognized holiday is going to be on the fifth. Yeah. We'll open on the fifth. No. So we'll open those three, and then you know we'll go from there. And Eileen's point, we'll see in September. I'll talk to John. Like, you want to go ahead and start opening? You know, I. I like to err on the side of caution, obviously, because, you know, the bottom line is the 90 days, January, February, and March. That's the bottom line. Right. I mean, if you look at you can look at these numbers, I mean, we did over a half million dollars in 90 days. I mean, a quick question. I, I, anecdotal, just being out there. It seems like there's a big difference from last week to this week. Of uh, rounds? Please. Yes. Jeff? Mm. It was maybe it was just the, maybe it was just a, I hit a gap and I was out there working on five. Yesterday, and it, yesterday was a little slower than the previous. Yeah, it was 167 yesterday. I think the week week before we did about 190. People are definitely going home. So there's going. some people that have gone home. Oh, yeah, see the car carriers. Yeah, and my um, my fiance works for uh, Southwest Florida Transportation and they do a lot of airport send a lot of cars out there and she said, but the last two weeks it was just absolutely pandemonium and now it's like almost crickets for them. That's phase one. Phase two will be the end of May and more people. Yeah. 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 But they got to get through reciprocal play through May. Yeah, they want to you know, check out the courses and get out and play. And we'll, well, I think a lot of people have realized that they were stuck here last April and May. That April and May are not bad down here. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have extended their stay because well, it's really not that bad. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. So reciprocal play usually starts May 1st. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. yeah that's right. So. John, when are you going to start the area? Uh, the first one is uh, the day after Memorial Day. That's the first certification. You gave us a list of that. Yeah, I gave you all the dates. Jeff has all the dates. I don't um, I don't think I have them on me. Okay. How many are we going to do? Uh, probably four. Four. Because last year we did three. Yeah. Right. I had four on schedule. Right. Four we yeah. scheduled, but we, we did one in April. Remember, like, yeah, that's right. We did. we did. We skipped May. Okay. Did April, skipped May. Yeah, we did do four. That's right. So, so we were going to do five because we skipped one. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. We skipped one. Because we did. It was we June or July. So well. We were doing so well. It was like, no, we we're not close. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So did we? Well, yeah, we did three last year. We're yeah. going to do okay. four. So we're going to do four. Yeah. Okay. May, June, July, August. Yeah. 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 We have four on the schedule on the books. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. That's all I got for now. Jeff. A um, couple things. I, I gave you guys a little uh, rundown of what, it, what we're looking at. Um, through yesterday, uh, we're above budget by a little over $10,000. Uh, and we still have, uh, what, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four days left. Uh, we, we're, we did have some rain influences last week a little bit. Uh, I think we could have easily been somewhere close to seventy-five dollars to $100,000 over budget for the month of April. Um, I think we'll wind up probably somewhere around 45 to 50. Okay. Um, you know, this part of this uh, pandemic surge, um, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, the phone system. So we've been talking, you know, try to get CenturyLink. I tried, tried. Nobody seemed to want to come do it. Call Comcast. Comcast said, well, you know, we've had some issues with the phone uh, and the cable because of work that's being done in your area. So we've had that a couple times. But other than that, um, I kind of drew the conclusion that, you know, the phone system is uh, 10 years old. It was one of the first things that when I came to work here that we changed over was the phone system. It was an antiquated at that time. I think a 10-year-old phone system is probably antiquated at this time. So I would recommend to the board uh, per our new budget for 21, 
22 that we put in there for a new phone system. I'll work with Steve at Florida Communications, get a set number on what that is, and we'll go from there. We used Steve last time. And the phone system, for the most part, has been good for a decade. Right. And anytime I've had a problem, I've called him, and he's always been right there to help. He's Naples guy, he's a good guy, and we've had, you know, nothing but good things, so I, I don't see you really going out and looking for other people on that one. Okay. Um, Spark Golf will start their league here tomorrow. Uh, Spark is an organization out of Orlando. They put leagues together. They, it's all uh, uh, social media based. Uh, they do everything uh, via an app on the phone. Part of like John talking about the new generation of golfers, the the, the guys in their you know 25 to 45, uh, they're getting out to play. Um, they'll be here tomorrow. They start out at 5:30, so it's like found money for us. Spark, spark, spark golf. Spark golf. Is that like a league? Yep. How many people? They have 28 the first time out. So it's normal tea times that we wouldn't be felling. Uh, we're normally closed at five o'clock, so I'm, time will they I'm all for it. What's that? What time will they be starting? They'll be starting at 5.30. Just a nine hole. Nine hole, yeah. little shotgun, every Wednesday. Do they play for something? Yeah, they have something that they can play in. I'm not exactly certain what it is. Is there an age limit? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, think it's more, I think it's more like the, for lack of a better term, the man broke crowd, you know, the, the guys with the beards and, you know. Buns. Buns and you know, you know, those guys. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, I, their money spends, and then we're happy to have them. And like I said, it's like he called me about it, and I'm like, sure, found money. You know, let's do it. Um, Great. Especially in the uh, off season, right? Yeah, off season, you know, 28 to 32 players on 5 30 on Wednesdays. Great. Yeah. And then we'll do How many typically play on Thursday for the Beavers group? The Beavers group uh, is 20 to, 20 yeah. to 30. Same, same. same. Good. Uh, we're doing a little tournament today. We originally had it scheduled for last week, but with the with weather, we were a little leery of it. It was kind of like a fun thing to do with Duffy's for a kickoff. We did do Glide Golf, which Glide is partners with us with a couple things. And John talking about, um, what's, it, what's the place we get balls in? Oh, Top Golf. Top Golf. Glide's going to be heavily involved with Top Golf. And the idea that I have, and the vision that I have with Kevin Van Duzer, the owner of Glide Golf, is that. The people that he gets from from Top Golf, Stony Brook will be their destination to play golf, and we're going to hold events through them. And they've done a really good job. Uh, a couple charity events that, that I wanted to do, they set it up, they ran, they, they did all the postings for. One for a kid that I played junior golf with that was in a really bad car accident out here off of uh, of Corkscrew, uh, head-on collision, really screwed up his leg bad, was out of work for six months. Um, we're doing one for him Memorial Day weekend, and then uh, a friend, uh, her husband has ALS, and we're doing an ALS scramble in November. So, you know, they've done a real good job with that. They put this on. We're doing something with the Shriners. They bring us business. And, uh, you know, Glide's really good, too. It's another app-based sign-up kind of thing. And it's, you know, this, they give us a credit card and say, here, we got these number of players. We charge a card, and that's our... That's our responsibility with it. And you know, like, if people would come to me and say, hey, I got this charity, I want to put on a tournament, can you help me? Yes, but you know, most times it, there would be like potholes in that road. This way there's a spot, they know where to sign up, they know where it's at, you know, da da da. It's, it's a lot better and it's worked out really well. So I'm real happy with Glide. And we look forward to that relationship growing, becoming bigger and bigger as we go forward. Um, tea times. Uh, you know, currently we do crossovers. Uh, last summer, we went to straight tea times in the summer and it worked out very well. So we're going to do it again. It allows us to cut back some staffing and also allows us to give out those really super early morning tea times. And for guys like uh, the gentleman sitting to the right of me, you like to play really fast. When are you start that? <laughs> May, May 1st. Um, you get to 7 o'clock, you go right out, you're done in two hours, two and a half hours. You know, you beat the heat. That's our group, right, Phil? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. So you know, I, I dig that. is that every day or oh. every day? Yeah. The board gets that first. <laughs> Preferential treatment. <laughs> 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 oh, that's good. No, actually, Bobby called me and asked me about a, a, like a Sunday league. We're starting out first or something. Yeah. And I said that's fine. And so we're kind of expecting it coming soon. Yeah. So anyway, it worked out really well last year. I said we'd do it again. It's uh, I mean, stretched out the tee times are nine minutes. I mean, you know, all that kind of stuff. That kind of can do some some summer play and make it a little bit more manageable. So I think it's going to be good for us. Um, other than that, I don't really have much more going on. Junior golf's doing good. Looking forward to uh, uh, we got a firecracker the second, third of July. Then we got the AJGA here in the middle of July. I know some of the board members are housing some of the, some of the staff for the AJGA. And if anybody else can help, I'm still looking for two more people to be housed. Um, uh, the uh, officials for the AGGA. Um, the Hampton Inn is not giving us as many rooms as they gave us last year. Where are the dates? Um, July 10th to the 17th. To the 17th, yes. Yeah, so, um, and I will tell you the, um, I mean, I have one, the Jabrinos have two, I need two or three more beds. Um, if anybody can jump in and help us there. Um, I will tell you the officials that were here last year were the most respectable group of people. Um, I've spoken with Darcy, who's managing it, and she's going to give me the bios of everybody so I know who's there. Um, but yeah, I'm still looking for uh, viewing. And their dinners will be out, so you're not you know, feeding them every night. Their lunches will be here. Breakfast, Jeff, I'm thinking since the Hampton Inn gave them stuff last year, maybe we can we'll you know, have up. juice and coffee and stuff in the mornings for them. So they're really just um, using your bed, beds and bathroom. Um, and again, they were a great group of people. Um, yeah, they're we, great kids. They were great. We had them for dinner. We had them all for dinner one night. Mike and Cindy are going to have them for dinner one night. We've got meals. Marsala's donated. Had them all over there for dinner. We're hoping Pete. puppies will jump in. Uh -huh. Pete, had that Peter was really good to us. He had them there twice. I mean, you know, we're hoping for Duffy's to be available for them. And, um, you know, Publix donated food. Yeah. I mean, you know. Um, for me, personally,